All right, in this video, what I want to do is show you the four things that you need to know to evaluate a trigonometric function without memorizing the unit circle. The first thing you're going to need to know is what happens when we have a coordinate point on the coordinate grid system. So for instance, if I have this x, y coordinate, right? Um, remember, this is a coordinate plane, so we have an x-axis and a y-axis. And x represents the horizontal distance away from the origin, and y represents the vertical distance away from the origin. So we can draw a triangle just like this, all right? And that's going to be a right triangle. And again, this horizontal length of this triangle is um, x, and this one's going to be y. Now what's nice about this is what about the differences of the quadrants? Because if I reflect this exact same triangle across the y-axis, I'm going to get the exact same angles here. Like let's call this angle theta. That angle is going to be exactly the same, right, when you reflect it. Um, as, well as, the court, as well as the distances are going to be exactly the same. However, the x-coordinate is now going to be negative. That's going to be the same down here, where now not only will my x be negative, but also my y. And then over here, I will have a negative y, but a positive x. Now, these are very important for us to be able to identify our trigonometric functions. But if you remember, our trigonometric functions were based on triangles of knowing not only the side lengths, right, our x and our y's, but knowing our hypotenuse. And one of the tips that we've kind of used as we kind of progress along our understanding of trigonometry, that we recognize our triangles, our trigonometric functions are ratios. So therefore, they're going to be the same no matter what the side lengths are for this given angle, meaning they are proportional with one another. So therefore, we can really decide on what length we want. We could use r to represent any side length for our hypotenuse, or we could use 1, which is going to be rather simple. And the reason why we like to use 1 when we're evaluating the trigonometric functions, um, because if you remember, if I said the sine of theta, right? remember this side length was y and this was x. So y over 1, well, why write y over 1, right? Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. If we have just hypotenuse as 1, then we can just say the sine of theta is y. Cosine of theta, remember, that was adjacent over hypotenuse. But if my hypotenuse is 1, I can just write x. Tangent, again, is going to be y over x. Now, again, we also have to include our reciprocal functions, right? And remember, sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So we can just write cosecant as 1 over y, secant of theta as 1 over x, and cotangent of theta as x over y. All right, and again, these are going to be based off of this triangle here when my hypotenuse is equal to 1. So it's very, under, it's very helpful to understand that you have this triangle with this hypotenuse um, equal to 1. And actually, I'm going to change this about because what we can do here is if you think about taking points that are all going to have a radius of 1, I'm actually going to rewrite this. I'm going to switch these around. Then we can create a triangle, I'm sorry, a circle based off of the value of 1. So I can say 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, and 0 comma negative 1. Right? So if you kind of, kind of take these triangles, and you could place them inside of here, or I could draw a triangle around these. Um, I'm not going to, but you could draw a triangle around these from here. And let's just kind of pretty this up a little bit, maybe from out there. There we go. I just wanted this to make a little better. OK, it looks a little bit better now. But now what I can do is I can create a circle that all has a radius of 1, right? Because remember, these triangles all have a radius of 1. Now, the next thing we need to understand is, well, all right, so you created a circle based on a radius of 1. We have these triangles, but where did the triangles go? And the nice thing, the cool thing about the unit circle is they didn't go anywhere. They're still around. Now, the unit circle, though, is helpful because what it does is rather than us having to memorize or look at all these triangles, we can simplify this based on the coordinate points. So if I was going to create a triangle, um, I could put these triangles inside of these of this circle. Now, again, I could do it in all four of these quadrants. But what we're going to want to do, if we want to evaluate our trigonometric functions, I like to focus on just the first quadrant. So you could create a triangle here, right? But again, the important thing I want you to understand is all of these extra side lengths, this is starting to get kind of confusing, right? You have all these different triangles for all these different x's and y's. And it's like, 
whoa, this is starting to get to be a lot. So what we're going to focus on when we're evaluating the trigonometric functions using the unit circle is going to be our special right triangles, our 45, 45, 90 triangle, and our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now the cool thing about the 30, 60, 90 triangle is we can write it as 30, right, 60, 90, or as well as we could also go like this, or actually write it like that, where you could also write it as a 60, 30, 90 triangle. So therefore, we can represent all of these angles. Now for this video, I'm actually going to try to get us away from the degrees, and I'm going to focus on using radians. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these angles, and I'm going to erase these triangles now, and I'm just going to give you the direct line sight here. So from here to here, and from there to there. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just give you the dashed lines to let you know that they're still there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the angles in radians. So if you want to convert them from degrees to radians or radians to degrees, that's fine. But I think it's really important in trigonometry to get used to radian measure for our angles. So the first angle here, we have 30 degrees. Well, in terms of radians, that's going to be pi over 6. The next angle is going to be a 45, 45, 45, 90 triangle. In terms of radians, that's going to be pi over 4. The next angle here was our 60, 30, 90, so 60 degrees in terms of radians is going to be pi over 3. And then last but not least is we have half of a circle, right, which is going to be pi halves or 90 degrees, which you convert that is going to be equal to pi halves. Now, what we have done is we've looked at this unit circle and, and without dissecting like where are the values of the unit circle come from, which I do have a video on explaining you where the values come from, but Therefore, you should recognize that these coordinate points, when you have a hypotenuse of 1, is going to produce from these special right triangles these coordinate points. Now again, if you forgot how they came from, I have a very easy way for you to remember. We know that these are all coordinate points. The first two coordinate points are really easy to remember, right? This is 1, 0, and this is 0, 1. And the reason being is because um, obviously, the hypotenuse is 1, right? And again, I'm just looking at this as my first quadrant. And again, I have a video explaining where these values come from and why these are the values. But again, if you just want a quick little trick on how to mem remember them, remember they're all fractions with a denominator of 2. And again, you can a lot of, a lot of times you go see those videos, you know, you have the nice little hand trick. And then all you're simply going to do is start up here and go square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 1 square root of 2, square root of 3. So that way, if you don't remember how to create them on your own, you can always just have this memorized. So I would like to obviously just write the square root of 1 as 1. And now you can see we have four things that you need to know to be able to evaluate. Now again, before we're done, I'm going to actually evaluate um, some trigonometric functions for you using these techniques and show you how to go ahead and do this without actually having to memorize that. All right, so here are the six examples that I am going to work through by evaluating for you. So again, the first thing we're going to want to understand is I have the sine of pi over 4. So we know that the sine of the angle, again, my angle is pi over 4, the sine of the angle is equal to y. And again, the y represents the point on the unit circle. And again, that can only be true because the unit circle has a radius of 1, right? So we're still talking about triangles. We're still talking about opposite over hypotenuse. But since the hypotenuse is 1 and we're on the unit circle, we can use these values. So all you're simply going to do in this case is look at the first quadrant, pi over 4, and you can see the y coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. Now, what about if your angle is not in the first quadrant? Well, then what we're going to do is we're going to use this idea of the reference angle. So in this case, I have 5 pi over 6. All right. Now, what I want you to understand is what is the reference angle of 5 pi over 6. So if we were to break this up into six equal parts, right? Because we know halfway around a circle is pi, right? So this would be 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 6 pi over 6, right? Half of a circle represents pi because that's equal to 180. So if we travel 5 pi over 6, right, then what is our reference angle? How far are we away from the x-axis? And hopefully you recognize this reference angle is going to be pi over 6. Now, here's the thing that's important about these triangles. If this is pi over 6, this is going to be reflected over. So this is pi over 6, right? The reference angles are the same for all of these triangles. 
That's what's important. So all we're doing is if I don't know what the, I don't know what this point is, but I know that this point is the exact same point as over here. The only difference is the x's are negated. So this point is the point on the unit circle with a reference angle of pi over 6. So all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to go to my first quadrant, find pi over 6, and find the cosine, which is square root of 3 over 2. However, I'm not trying to find this point in the first quadrant. I'm trying to find the point in the second quadrant, right? Because that is where that angle lies. And therefore, that is going to be a negative x. So this value is a negative square root of 3 over 2. Now we can go a little bit further. What about if we have 5 pi over 3? So instead of breaking up our, um, instead of breaking up our half of our circle into, uh, into 6, we can break it up into thirds. So I can say, all right, 1 third, 2 thirds. So here's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. Well, again, we have 5 thirds, right? So I'm going to break this up into here to here. Now again, half of a circle is, let's go this way, half of a circle is pi. All the way around is 2 pi. If you were to think about that in terms of thirds, half of a circle is 3 pi over 3. All the way around a circle is 6 pi over 3. And again, you can count with me. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and 6 pi over 3. So this angle is only at 6 pi over 3. So I'm going to go all the way over here. Now again, the point on the unit circle is down here. But I don't know that point on the unit circle because I didn't memorize the unit circle, right? I didn't memorize those points. But I do recognize the reference angle. How far, am, again, am I away from the x-axis? Well, if I traveled 5 pi over 3 and all the way around the circle is 6 pi over 3, I can say my reference angle, in this case, is going to be pi over 3. And again, it's important to understand, the reference angle here is going to be the exact same angle here. These are equal values. These points are exactly the same. The only difference between these two points is the y is negative. The x is still positive. So I'm not going to look down here, but I'm going to look at, well, what is the reference angle? What is pi over 3? So I go to pi over 3, and I recognize here I have square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Now, remember, tangent is y over x. So if I'm going to simplify this, I'm going to take the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Now remember, if you need to simplify this, you can always multiply the same number in the top and the bottom as a fraction. That's you know, allowed. That's legal. So if I multiplied by 2 over a 2, the 2's would just divide out, leaving me with a square root of 3. However, we need to understand something. Because this coordinate point is not positive down here. The y coordinate is negative. So remember, we're taking the y over the x. Well, if the y is negative, that means my whole function or my value is going to be negative. So this would be a negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So therefore, this is a negative square root of 3. Now, the thing I love about the unit circle is it takes us away from using our trigonometric functions from triangles. Because we're so used to identifying the um, you know, sine, cosine, tangent based on a triangle, knowing the adjacent, the opposite side, and the hypotenuse. And that falls apart for us once we have to evaluate trigonometric functions uh, for, say, like 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, or 270 degrees. Well, the next three angles are kind of very similar. You can see here pi. Right? Well, I don't, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. How can you have an angle inside of a triangle at 180 degrees? And you can't. You can't use triangles to evaluate the sine of pi. However, we can use our understanding of the unit circle. And that's why this triangle is so important. Because we have the first quadrant. And the first quadrant, again, is made up of these special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, the 45, 45, 90. But what about these x and y intercepts? Because the x and y intercepts allow us to be able to evaluate for angles that are going to be outside of or less than 90 degrees, right? Outside of those acute angles. As well as to understand that we can have angles that are larger than a revolution, right? We're not just restricted to you know, these acute angles. We can have obtuse, larger than 180, larger than 360 um, angles. And we can evaluate them. However, for this angle, we're just looking for, again, uh, using our understanding of the y coordinate. Right? Because even though, yes, it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? that never went away. But when we think about this um, as the hypotenuse is 1 and we look at this unit circle, the sine of pi is halfway around the circle, right? It represents pi. Y represents the, or sine of pi represents the y coordinate, which in this case is 0. Okay? So again, we're just looking at the y coordinate. Because again, 0 um, 
it doesn't make sense for us to create a triangle with that angle. What about cosine of zero? Well, cosine of zero would be like going directly over here, right? Which is like nowhere. And cosine of zero, again, represents the x-coordinate. Well, over here, the x-coordinate is equal to 1. And then last but not least here, we could have the tangent of pi halves. So if you go to pi halves, which would be like 90 degrees, tangent represents the y over the x. Well, 1 over 0 is going to be undefined. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate your trigonometric functions without memorizing the unit circle. I hope this was helpful for you. And really, guys, it just comes down to practicing. It might take you a little bit while to use this new technique, and you might just want to be, you know, um, you might just want to give in and just memorize the unit circle, but trust me, by using this process, by understanding these four diagrams, you're going to be able to evaluate trigonometric functions much quicker than your counterparts trying to memorize the unit circle every single time they need to answer a question. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.